The Fast and Furious franchise doesn't just have insane stunts and intense action sequences, it also serves up a whole menu of iconic cars. From souped-up classics to high-tech supercars, Fast and Furious knows how to please gearheads. There's a new batch of automotive eye candy to look forward to with every film, even though the franchise may have shifted its focus away from street racing for now. Welcome to Infinite Mileage, where we'll talk about some of the most iconic cars that have ever been featured in the Fast saga. The Mustang Fastback In the third film from the saga, we were treated to a hella impressive lineup of JDM cars. But one particular car stole the spotlight, the 1967 Ford Mustang. The reason people love this car is because it's not an ordinary Mustang. The movie did something nobody expected and gave the Mustang a heart transplant, using a Nissan Silvia as the donor. This wasn't your typical engine swap, it was a fusion of American muscle and Japanese precision. It was the perfect example of car fusion, a symbol of two automotive worlds colliding. An American classic with a heart transplant from one of the finest JDM machines creates a beast that churns out nearly 500 horses. This was proof of the originality that the Fast franchise offers to car guys all over the world. Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9 Paul Walker's on-screen persona, Brian O'Connor, is clearly a JDM lover, and one of the Japanese legends he took for a spin was the Lancer Evo. In Too Fast, Too Furious, we were introduced to the 2002 Lancer Evo 7, sporting a custom paint job that didn't win any beauty contest, but it paid homage to O'Connor's first ride, the Mitsubishi Eclipse. More on that later, because what this car had under the hood was far more zippy than the Eclipse, with a 2-liter inline 4 turbocharged engines flexing around 272 horsepower and 385 newton meters of torque. When you put the pedal to the metal, it could go from 0 to 60 in just 4.8 seconds. In true JDM fashion, the Lancer Evo packed a punch and made sure Brian stayed fast and furious. 1968 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Grand Sport the 1960s brought us some of the most iconic cars, and one of them was the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, which also happened to make an appearance in Fast Five. This classic made its grand entrance as Dom, Mia, Vince, and Brian orchestrated a daring car heist from a speeding train, but this was just the beginning of its journey. The Stingray managed to go down in Fast and Furious history, making one of the coolest stunts to date. Dom's quick thinking with the Stingray helped save O'Connor, and with the enemies hot on their tails, Dom took the Stingray for a ride down a steep cliff. And get this, they used an actual Stingray for this stunt, even though the hero car we all saw doesn't actually exist. Don't miss out on the most iconic and reoccurring car in the entire franchise. Stay tuned! If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Mazda RX-7 FD When you're making a movie set in Tokyo, you can't forget about the legendary Mazda RX-7 FD. The RX-7 doesn't just play a role in the movie, it practically steals the spotlight. But that's also because this was no ordinary RX-7. It was given a whole makeover by Han. Veilside worked their magic on this beast, with a custom body kit so good that Han's RX-7 managed to win the best car award at the Grand Prix show in 2005. Without a doubt, Tokyo Drift wouldn't have been the same without this beautiful car. Funnily enough, since it's a rotary, it only had 1.3 liters, but it could generate up to 302 horsepower and it was a torque monster with 347 newton meters. When you're talking about Tokyo's car culture, the Veilside Mazda RX-7 FD is the poster child. Suki's Honda S2000 there was a particular S2000 that took the spotlight in Too Fast, Too Furious. This S2000 was unlike any other because not only was it supercharged, but it also had a flashy pink paint job and a body kit courtesy of Veilside. If that doesn't jog your memory, it's Suki's, played by the talented Devin Aoki, who takes the wheel of this beast. Now, what most people don't know is that this is the same car Johnny Tran drove in the first movie, but it found a new purpose as Suki's ride with a new paint job. Under the hood, the S2000 was powered by a feisty 2-liter inline 4 engine, and thanks to a CompTech supercharger, this beast churned out an impressive 345 horsepower. That made it one of the fastest cars in the Fast Saga. Flip Car Now for the legendary Flip Car. This car was like an F1 car's wild cousin. Born out of the creative chaos of the Fast and Furious crew, its mission? Flipping cars. Literally. It did that because of the super slanted metal plate hugging the road right up front. Fun fact, remember all those car flippings in the movie? All real. 
Police cars soaring through the air like they just don't care? Yeah, that wasn't an illusion. Under the hood, the flip car was packing 475 horses, which was enough oomph to flip any car in its path. The flip car might just be the maddest thing to ever hit the Fast and Furious scene. Nissan Skyline GTR R34 The R34 Skyline GTR is often regarded as one of the best automobiles and has earned this reputation because of its incredible power. Under the hood, it has the legendary RB26 2.6 liter inline six twin turbo engine, a true icon, even outside of the fast saga. The Skyline GTR is like a reoccurring character throughout the franchise, like Dom's Charger. Similar to Dom's Charger, the Skyline has mad customization potential, so it has a very special place in the Fast and Furious world. In fact, there are rumors that the Skyline in Too Fast, Too Furious was the first fully street legal car in the States. 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse This car takes the wheel at the very beginning of the Fast and Furious saga and has a special place for every Fast and Furious fan. It's the first car that Brian O'Connor gets behind the wheel of in the whole franchise, setting up the tone for his character. This is also the car he uses for a street race against Dom in the first film, and it becomes a target for Johnny Tran's crew, leading to a dramatic shooting scene. Although Dom won the race and took the pink slip, the Mitsubishi Eclipse will always be a very special car. Sure, this car didn't really pack a punch with the 2.0-liter, 4-cylinder engine, but the fact that the late Paul Walker used it to introduce the world to the Fast franchise makes this a very, very special car. Toyota Supra Mach 4 when it comes to car culture, the Supra Mach 4 reigns supreme. Now, there have been other Supras in the series, but it was Brian's orange Supra in the first film that was really special, especially since Toretto and O'Connor restored this car from the ground up. All it had was an immaculate 2JZ engine when Dom popped the hood, as Brian asked, and that was the moment this car became an icon. The 2JZ engine that we saw in the movie turned out a mind-blowing 540 horsepower. And if that wasn't enough, there was also a 97 horsepower NOS system tucked away for an extra kick. Impressive, right? 1970 Dodge Charger RT Dominic Toretto is a man known for two things his love for family, and his obsession with American muscle cars. But the crown jewel of his car collection is the heavily souped up 1970 Dodge Charger RT. This beast keeps making a comeback in every installment, with the same 7.2 liter V8 engine, apparently churning out unlimited horses. But regardless of how silly the power figures are, it's a true American classic muscle car that has become the icon of the franchise. Some cast members even call it their personal favorite and most iconic ride from the series. That's probably why this Charger keeps getting makeovers for different roles. In its debut in The Fast and the Furious, it was a 900 horsepower beast. Then Fast Five featured it with a 528 cubic inch Hemi V8. But it didn't end there. It got a wild upgrade for off-roading in Fast 7 too. Every movie gave the Charger a new twist. It's practically a part of the family. But which crazy new version of the Charger could we see next? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Until then, take care.